Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the Rotopros.com Best DFS Show that just happens to come at you around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six and all the main sites. Welcome to a Champions League breakdown for the main slate on February 12th and 13th, the Tuesday and Wednesday here midweek. We got a little bit coming at you. It's different. I love it. I love these Champions League slates. I love the knockout stage. This is an excellent time for us to get some really serious edges and a lot of people that aren't particularly familiar with uh, the the in-depth parts of these teams unless they've been into the Champions League the entire time. So I'm really excited for this. Uh, let's jump into this right away. First game is uh, PSG making the trip uh, to Manchester to play Manchester United. We have Porto making the trip uh, to play Roma. Dortmund traveling to London to play Spurs. And Real Madrid uh, traveling into Holland uh, to play a uh, Ajax. Excuse me. So, yeah. Let's just start right off the hop here. First game we have PSG traveling to Manchester United. Now, there's a few running themes that we're going to have uh, throughout this entire slate. And one of those first running themes is this probably not going to be a clean sheet to be had across the board so what we should be looking for especially in cash is not only a safer win but a team that's going to make a lot of saves and we're presented with that uh, off the very first opportunity with David De Gea now for the most part let, let's first look at PSG and their main issue right now is that they're fairly hurt uh, in particular Neymar and Cavani won't be playing this midweek on top of Munier will also be out now this is actually pretty big because what this forces is either uh, a few different different players into different positions and uh, some random starters now one particular random starter here is what I believe to be a trap and there's another starter that I believe is one of the locks of the slate the trap I believe is going to be uh, the the most likely the starter on right back for Mernier, uh, Dilo Kier, uh, and I'm not necessarily interested in that. He's had lots of opportunities already this Champions League to make a mark. He's an okay real life player. He's very young. He's still a kid. But in terms of DFS, uh, there isn't a lot of uh, relevance to be had outside of a few fantasy points. And while that isn't necessarily something you should be afraid of from 3.5k, there's still just better options. If you fall on him for either format, and you, you see the issue here is that he could just finish zero and that's that is a concern uh especially with the lack of clean sheet that's probably coming so it isn't something that i'm falling on this week whatsoever uh it's i'm not interested i believe it's a trap but if you happen to i i think there are worse options uh than uh the really cheap option of psg but the lock of the slate uh, to start off the first game it should be, again, with Champions League, it can be tough sometimes to know wh who will actually end up starting. Uh, but Danny Alves has been playing center midfield for PSG for the past few a few weeks, and he's been absolutely outstanding, uh, both in terms of DFS relevance and in real in real life relevance. So I have absolutely no issue with him at 2.7k on DK uh, on uh, Fanduel. He's probably just as cheap as well, so I have no issue with him uh, really in either format in either site. He's someone that you're probably going to want to get in there, especially in cash, uh, where you only really need six to eight fantasy points, especially from 2.7k but then whenever you get into the gpp realm that kind of uh value if you get three four x from him from 2.7k you're flying in a gpp so you can really get away with this in either format this slate i don't mind it especially in DraftKings. 2.7k get danny alves into your cards now for this game there's really two different ways to look at it. there's a gpp script and there's a cash script the cash script uh says that both teams are going to score uh they may not score a lot but there won't be a, a clean sheet to be found and the gpp script says that one of these two teams can probably get a clean sheet uh in terms of cash there's going to be a lot of routes you can take that will say psg will score a goal and uh, there's a lot at the same time that suggests that PSG may not score a lot of goals, whether it's Man United playing so well lately or whether it's PSG being so hurt in the really important areas. Uh, Draxler could see 90 minutes. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Chupamoteng gets any kind of serious start or minutes. Uh, but the real lock here for cash this slate that you want to play from PSG in particular across the board he's too cheap 8.1 uh, Angel Di Maria absolute lock this slate get him into your cards for cash uh, GPP I wouldn't stress it as much because like I said there's scripts that would suggest to that man you know I could come away with a clean sheet 
Uh, but at the same time, there's not a lot of scripts that would suggest that Angel Di Maria can't get double digits from 8.1K. Uh, and not only that, but stand a chance to get the higher end of double digits, uh, pushing into maybe the 20s even, which is a huge ask, uh, but in a ceiling, uh, retrospective ceiling, excuse me. But in terms of 8.1K, it's just too cheap considering uh, Neymar will be out. And I think Mbappe does hold obvious uh, relative value, or excuse me, relative uh, purpose, but he doesn't hold much value for me at 8.6K. Uh, whether it's that he's going to be extremely highly owned because a lot of people will be falling on him due to no Cavani or Neymar, or for the fact that he's Mbappe and he's going to draw a lot of ownership as is. So I'm not as thrilled about him this site. I think Di Maria makes more sense than Mbappe. You could probably stack both and get away with it and maybe hope for two goals on Man United, but I think that's a really big ask to the slate. There's isn't really something I'm looking to attack, and I'd rather just stick with Di Maria at 8.1k for either format before I would take Mbappe. That's to say, again, that isn't saying Mbappe's a bad play. It's just not the route I'm, I'm really interested in taking. I'd much rather Di Maria and his floor. Without Neymar and without Cavani, Di Maria basically has absolute 100 exclusive set pieces right. So 8.1k on PSG, knowing he's going to have all the set pieces, that's just really hard to turn down for cash, despite how great uh, De Gea is looking here. Because uh, the the thing is, is that PSG are just decimated by injuries. So theoretically, we could look at this two ways. Either PSG is going to give us value, or they're going to be trap value. And if we're running with the theme that Kara at the back could be trap value, you could easily run that forward that Draxler hasn't really been that impressive since the World Cup. So there's a lot to suggest here that Man United could have a slight edge towards a clean sheet, or at the very least keeping PSG under two goals. Now, Man United hasn't lost in 10 straight here. They've been absolutely outstanding, or excuse me, 11 straight since Olga Solskjaer has taken over. They've won 10 of the 11. Uh, a, a lot of this, again, has to do with both teams are probably conceding. And that's that's just the cash script of this. Like, uh, PSG has had both teams score in all of their games this Champions League. Uh, it, they've had three-plus goals in basically seven of their past ten uh, games, away games, excuse me. So there's there's lots to suggest that PSG is going to score. They're PSG. They're even without Cavani and uh, even without all the other names. They're they're still able. Or Neymar, excuse me, the name uh, name one in particular. They're still an excellent attacking side. So while I do like United, they have conceded in six of their previous twelve games, ten games, something like that. Uh, and they've seen three plus total goals in six of their uh, seven home games. Of seen three plus total goals so like uh in seven of the 11 games sorry they've seen uh, three plus total so yeah it, it's tough to say that neither team is going to stay off the score sheet here uh but with psg's injuries we could even at the very least assume De gay could get uh, a better cash relevance look than a lot of these other keepers that won't have a hope at a clean sheet this late uh, so yeah, that's really my take on this game. I think Man United will win. Uh, they've just been a really good home team, and PSG has been worse away from home. Uh, when they go back into France and everyone's healthy, uh, it'll be a completely different story, and that will probably be one of the bigger tests for United of this entire season. But for the time being, I don't think they'll be overly challenged by the injured and unhealth, uh, injured and unhealthy, the injured and trap value team that PSG will present this slate. Uh, so. Uh, I'll say a 2 nothing ceiling uh, GPP script and maybe a 2-1-1-1 draw here uh, with David De Gea still paying off from 4.8K. Now, uh, I still didn't really talk much else about uh, Paul Pogba and how great he's been recently. Uh, like Nobody needs to really discuss that. And 6.1K is too cheap even going up against PSG. Uh, Rashford should see 90 minutes from 7.6K. That's borderline cash viable. Uh, he's just way too cheap uh, for, for uh, his role on United, assuming he gets 90 minutes considering he didn't play uh, over the weekend. So, yeah, I, I really don't mind taking both sides of this game. Uh, De Gea is probably my least favorite of the bunch. Uh, I would definitely take Rashford in cash, uh, and uh, I would take Pogba in either or. Pogba's just way too cheap. Uh, game stack this game in GPP. Take a side in cash. 
try not to take both sides just in case the game doesn't go as crazy as everything else. But in terms of Danny Alves and Angel, Angel Di Maria, they're absolute locks. Must play this slate. Uh, so, yeah, I'll say 2-1 Man United, but neither team really have issues getting uh, the production where they need it. Next game on the slate, we have Porto making the trip uh, into Italy to play Roma. Very interesting game again. Uh, this presents basically two different types of Champions League teams. Roma scraped through winning only half their games. They're on a back-to-back -back losing streak in Champions League. Uh, they've scored lots. They've scored in like 15 of their last 17 Champions League games. Uh, conceded in uh, 11 of those. Like They're not uh, a team that's going to go out and completely dominate uh, any side, uh, especially They'll still find ways to get really deep into this competition, though. And th that's really the big thing here for for Roma is that they tend to come alive in the knockout stages. And this is where they really start to step up and play. Now, Porto, on the other hand, completely ripped through the uh, group stage. Didn't lose a single game. One of the five teams to go undefeated. Um... The interesting thing here is that neither team has actually conceded in the opening 30 minutes of a game in the Champions League yet. So uh, the, the, the contrast to that is that neither team is particularly good at keeping clean sheets, especially Porto. They haven't kept one away since 2014. Uh, so uh, this isn't something to look at. And they're a perennial Champions League team. So th this isn't something to look at here where we can say, yeah, we're going to find uh, another clean sheet opportunity. Uh, if anything, uh, you may be able to roll with the Roma goalkeeper. It sounds like Marate will be going as uh, the cash goalkeeper uh, for me this slate. Uh, just because I don't see Porto doing as well in uh, Roma compared to all the other teams. Uh, now, this is where you kind of have to make your first, again, last game. It was kind of either take the PSG or Man United side. Either Kolarov or Tellez should end up into your cash cards this slate. It's really hard for me to say at this point who it should be. I'm on the collar off side because I think Jekko is generally one of the better plays from slate to slate and especially at only 8.4k. A lot of this slate I didn't really talk about with Neymar and Kane both being out that eats up a ton of high end salary so you really shouldn't have too much issue this slate getting goals into either format. And when we're looking at a team like Porto uh, and Roma both teams present excellent goal scorers and excellent wingbacks who have almost exclusive set pieces set uh, right. So, yeah, I prefer the Kolarov side, but if you were to take both Tellez and Kolarov in the same cash card together with Danny Alves, I think this is a very good core build so far. Uh, but if I was to drop one of the two, I would definitely drop the Tellez and stick with the Kolarov. He's been playing incredible as of late, scored on the weekend, really looking for some Kolarov. Uh, now, in terms of the midfield, it, the main issue for Porto across the board is minutes. Literally, every single player, you're welcome to click on DraftKings yourself and check out every single one of these guys' minutes. They don't get 90 minutes across the board, and it's absolutely devastating because there's some guys like Barami who would be an incredible DFS option if he just stayed on the field. Herrera is an exception. He's viable on FanDuel, but I definitely wouldn't play him on DraftKings outside the deepest of deep GPP stretches where you're really hoping uh, because he doesn't hold much DraftKings relevance where in FanDuel, he, he has all, he, he's probably one of the more expensive midfielders but uh, he definitely holds relevance over there. Not on DraftKings, though. Uh, Otavio takes the penalty shots, uh, still not seeing any kind of minutes at all. It's really tough. Oliver Torres, a really good player. No, uh, he saw 90 minutes, but again, that was an outing. Um, it's, it's tough uh, until you get to the forwards here. Now, Abukbar hasn't been playing yet. He is back from injury, but uh, this knee surgery takes a long time to recover from. So it, I expect Moraga to lead the line again from 6.7K. If you're not on the Marate side and you're not on the idea that Roma could get a clean sheet, you're probably going to have to go with Moraga in GPP for only 6.7K. Absolute steal. He's uh, been scoring like a madman. Uh, I have absolutely no issue with him even trying to chase this in cash. Now, that's a 
chase. That isn't something that you can rely on in cash. Uh, but his salary is cheap enough that it isn't the end of the world. Uh, if uh, he doesn't score, you're kind of hoping for six to eight fantasy points, obviously, from shots. Uh, and while he hasn't necessarily shown that as recently as I would have, much as I would have liked, um, his salary is just impossible to deny for GPP. Uh, so yeah, I really like Moraga and GPP, but for uh, cash, I definitely would stay away from that. Now on the Roma side of things, it's a completely different story where we have someone like Njeko for 8.4k. Again, he's someone that probably in retrospect should have been 10k with the two guys missing with the salaries. Uh, Jekko makes a lot of sense for either format. Stack him with Kolarov in either format. Uh, he takes enough shots and creates enough chances that even if he doesn't score a goal, he's going to be absolutely fine in cash. So I have no issue with him in either format for 8.4K. Uh, probably one of my more favored plays of the slate, especially the Kolarov to Jekko stack, is uh, could be extremely viable for either format in either slate. And to, to finish off really quickly, I do like uh, Clivert for GPP. Uh, but uh, Pellegrini is someone that you're going to have to consider as well for cash. He doesn't see enough uh, consistent minutes, but he doesn't really need them. And he's been doing incredibly well. 6.9K is probably too cheap. So if you land on 6.9K for cash, I really don't hate it. I think there's a lot better options, especially taking four Roma guys in the same cash card is extremely risky. I would go either Jekko or Pellegrini. And then whatever you're getting down to that kind of discussion, I'll take Jekko eight to nine times out of ten. So... Yeah, uh, I do think Roma is going to win this game. I'm hoping 2-0, uh, but it's probably going to be a 2-1, uh, kind of 1-0 game maybe, where uh, Dzeko gets a goal, at least a goal off at least six shots. So I really have no issue, like I said, with Dzeko and, uh, and Kolarov in either formats. And if you are looking for one of the more random uh, keeper chases of the slate, Marate is definitely up there for either format as well uh, because he will be extremely low on for GP. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's say uh, a 2 nothing Roma win. Next game on the slate, we have Dortmund traveling to Spurs. This is a really interesting game. Now, these two sides actually have a little bit of history. They met back in 2017 during that Champions League, and Spurs won both the games. Now, Spurs was kind of iffy for most of the season up until the end of the group stages, and they've absolutely caught fire since. Uh, they've won 11 of the 14 games since the end of the group stages. Uh, they've scored in 23 of their 25 games this season, but like every other team that we're finding this slate, uh, they've only got one clean sheet in their past seven games. Both teams have scored in seven of their eight previous games. Uh, so it, it, it's again, we're looking at a game where both teams are most likely going to score because Dortmund is actually coming into this on a three game losing streak in uh, their back in Germany games. And they've been scoring a ton of goals. They've got uh, an average three goals a game over the past four games. So it, it's really important to look at that. We're probably seeing another game with no clean sheet. Now, Dortmund has scored in 13 of the previous 15 Champions League games. They've conceded in nine straight. Uh, so again, uh, like it's uh, it, we just can't say that uh, it's a chase here. And I think in a, a lot of places, this is where a lot of people are going to fall into a trap chasing a clean sheet through Dortmund. Uh, Berkey and Hits have been absolutely amazing this Champions League, uh, rarely letting in a goal. Uh, so it, it, I think whenever people think there's no Harry Kane, they're going to instantly jump on the opposite of that and try and catch Spurs scoring no goals, uh, which I really don't think is going to happen. When we look at the group stages and what Dortmund was able to accomplish, they played two uh, minnows of teams, and they played Atletico Madrid, who's historically the lowest scoring team in European football. So, yeah, there's really no reason to assume that uh, Dortmund would continue this uh, low scoring run outside the thought that there's no Harry Kane, so Spurs is going to do badly. And honestly, Son has been on a complete tear and you can uh, my, my strategy for this basically is that uh, one of the big issues for Dortmund on top of what I just mentioned is that they're not really DFS friendly side they get 
uh, some 90 minute games, but for the most part, they don't really cross the ball. Uh, they don't really shoot the ball a lot. Like Polsic leads the games in crossing when he goes on for 25 minutes and takes four crosses. So like they don't do enough to really produce in DFS to warrant their salaries and ownership because anyone in North America will be clicking on Polisic's name in GPP at least once if they're playing multiple cards because it, why not, right? It's the tendency. It, it's, a, it's a leak for sure, and we should look at that to fade uh, unless uh, you think that Polisic can score, uh, which, again, I, I'm really su I'm really suspect over that. Now, uh, Rose sounds like he's going to be out, so uh, that means Gotze will be leading the line, and uh, a lot of people, again, will be looking at this 5.5K and saying, wow, that's such a steal. Gotze has had years of, again, doing this where he just doesn't produce uh, DFS-wise, which kind of runs true against the theme of Dortmund, that they're not necessarily a friendly DFS team outside of scoring goals. And uh, I do like Guerrero for GPP. I think he's super sneaky. He, he does play a lot of forward, but is listed as a defender. For only five point five or for only 5K in DraftKings and GPP, I think that makes a lot of sense. It'll be interesting to see who they start in the other wing back. Could be Akimi. I don't mind him. Uh, even for either format, I think you get away with it because Spurs shouldn't prevent that many crosses. Uh, but it, it's generally, for me, a fade on Dortmund. And I, it's not to say that they won't score goals. If I'm looking for anything, it'll be up front. I may chase some Alcacer, but again, there's real serious minutes concerns that we're looking at. Uh, so it's tough. You may want to take Gotze and GPP and just hope that he catches a goal or a penalty shot. Uh, because he should have tons of set pieces if that comes through. Uh, Bruno Larson hasn't been bad at all throughout the Champions League, though he hasn't really seen enough minutes. So it's tough. Uh, Wolf could be interesting. Uh, even Smeltzer uh, was really productive from his limited minutes that he saw. Uh, so if I was to go with anyone, maybe it would be Smeltzer if he gets the start, which I, I would be very surprised over. It's very unlikely. But again, um, yeah, this is a tough one. Both teams should score. I do like Spurs to do better, though. My, like I said, I do have a strategy here. My strategy is Ericsson cash on GPP or stack them both in GPP. I think Christian Ericsson is one of the better cash plays this slate. Uh, you shouldn't really have too many issues with him uh, not finding some sort of double-digit series value, especially from only 8.2K going up a team like Dortmund. Uh, I have absolutely no issues with that whatsoever. Uh, so, yeah, Christian Ericsson cash. Uh, Sun GPP, maybe stack them both in GPP. If you want to stack them both in cash, I think there's worse plays than that for sure. Uh, so the final score I'll say here again, I'll say another 2-1, maybe even 3-1 uh, Spurs where uh, Christian Eriksen gets uh, either a goal and an assist or two assists. He'll have two points by the end of the game. Final game of the slate, we have Real Madrid traveling to Ajax. This is another dream game here with a ton of DFS relevance for either side. I wouldn't start looking at it from the keepers. Uh, Onana was embarrassingly bad at points throughout this Champions League. Uh, very Carius, Loris Carius-esque. Uh, so I'm not really interested in chasing these kinds of numbers. Uh, now, can he make multiple saves? Absolutely, he's capable, but he's also capable of letting in multiple goals, and I'm not sure other keepers this slate are going to let in multiple goals. Uh, in particular, uh, David De Gea. Uh, in particular, uh, we have Manas, uh, Marate, excuse me. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, sticking to Tuesday for your keeper is probably a better idea than Wednesday. Uh, but if you were to go uh, any of the cheapest ways, it would definitely be Onana at 4K uh, and hope he just keeps Real Madrid under two goals. Uh, the main thing I'm looking at here for Ajax is, again, kind of a ja cash GPP take. Um, you can uh, get away with some Shona if you'd like. I think there's definitely worse plays, especially for cash. But my real look will be on Zayak for 7.6K. Absolute steal. Uh, poor man's Riyad Mahrez, absolutely talented. One of the vocal points of this offense. Uh, he's 
he excels in all the places that Real Madrid struggles. So I really like what he could potentially do this late. I think he's borderline a lock in cash from below 8K. 7.6K is a steal. Get him into your cash cards this late. Zayek is someone that you're really not going to want to sleep on. And second to that, I think you can get away with some Tadic and GPP. He's just been playing so brilliantly as of late that you don't want to sleep on him at all. Uh, penalty shots, he gets all involved in everything. Chance creation for FanDuel, he's really relevant on FanDuel. So yeah, I have absolutely no issue with someone like Deuce and Tadic from this salary. I'd prefer keep it to GPP and just roll with Zayak and Cash. Uh, but like I said, don't sleep on Ajax because it's Real Madrid. And to further that, uh, you can always just roll with Marcelo if you want. I don't mind Marcelo, even though he's 6 k Um I'm not too interested in the midfield outside of maybe Tony Cruz and Cash from 6.7K. I think he's probably too cheap, and you can definitely get away with some Tony Cruz. Um, is he my favorite Cash? No, he's definitely one of my top five Cash plays, absolutely. So uh, don't sleep on uh, either getting Tony Cruz and Zayak into the same Cash card this late. I think that's a very good plan. Uh, and if I was to choose one or the other, it would probably be Zayak. Uh, but in truth... Tony Cruz has been incredible all throughout this Champions League, and I definitely look for that to continue. Uh, the big stat for me here, actually, let this one loose on everyone before I dwell. Let's talk about after Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale uh, hasn't really been playing as much. He's been featuring mostly as a sub or coming off the field. So, uh, again, I'm not really interested in that high salary this late. You can kind of look past the salaries this late and have no issues getting literally anyone you want into your cards without too much issues. Uh, so, yeah, I think this is a really interesting cash core right here. It's not my favorite. Uh, I think uh, getting someone like Zayak in is a little bit more preferable over Cruz, but it still looks really good and gives you enough money where you can do some stuff outside of Gareth Bale for your finale. Uh, now, Ajax. One quick word here on Ajax, because everyone knows lots about Real Madrid and how great Real Madrid is, and there's no denying that they're a world-class team. Ajax is actually incredible in European competitions at home. They haven't lost at home in uh, European competitions since 2017. And uh, they've only lost one of their previous 23 Euro home games. So, again, like, if you're looking for cash options, they have it. If you're looking for a GPP option, they immediately have it as, as a default. Because they're going up against a team like Real Madrid, who will instantly draw all the ownership. Especially when people see no, so, no Neymar, they're instantly going to jump on Bale. And then if Bale doesn't even start, a lot of people are just going to click the panic button and jump on something like Isco or Vasquez and really sell themselves short. Uh, so, yeah. Final score. Don't even be surprised if Ajax wins this 2-1. Uh, probably a 1-1 draw. Uh, you can get away with Onana. But I, I definitely wouldn't recommend it as my top keeper play. Probably the third keeper play of the slate. So that's that's really where I'll stay with that. A 1-1 one, one draw, a 2-1 Ajax win. So yeah, really, the, uh, to the conclusion of this video, the big points are you need Angel Di Maria with his set pieces at 8.1K. Absolute must play. Christian Eriksen in cash, Son in GPP. Danny Alves is an absolute must play, playing center midfield right now for PSG at only 2.7K. Kolarov, I think he's crucial for either format, especially for GPP and linking him up for Jekyll, who has probably the highest goal props of the slate outside of the big salary guys who probably aren't going to play. And uh, in terms of keeper, uh, my favorite keepers are Marate on Roma, Gay on uh, Man United, and my third favorite is Unana on Ajax and going that value route. So yeah, that's the video for today. Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. Uh, next week, we should be coming right back at you again with the uh, other uh, games for the Champions League, another Tuesday, Wednesday. And then uh, after that, we'll be coming back to the second legs where all these teams will be doing their home and away. Now, it's important to remember, away goals matter. Uh, if uh, things go to tiebreakers, away goals, the team who has uh, the more away goals ends up uh, winning more times than not. So... Uh, don't sleep on away teams going out and looking to win for games when they're behind or tied and 
that goes two ways. One, they could do so, or secondly, they could expose themselves for another goal. And I think that may end up being the case in the final game with Ajax. Ajax, excuse me. I got one of my buddies called me out for saying Ajax. It's Ajax uh, between Ajax and Real Madrid, where if Ajax get ahead or Real Madrid aren't winning, uh, Real Madrid may start going for it a little bit and. Ajax is a massive counterattacking team. This is what they live for. These are the games they dream about. And if you're looking, if you're a betting man and you're looking for a minnow team that you want to look to go a little bit deeper this season, Ajax is 100% my team to go a little bit deeper than most teams, uh, than most people will expect from uh, the weaker teams. So yeah, that's the video for today. Rotopros.com, get over, check us out. Content is free. Uh, join our Slack. We got a 30-day trial on the go. Uh, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. Thank you very much for tuning in. Good luck, everyone. Hopefully, see you at the top. Take care.